Hi there, and welcome to another video of Copycat with Cables. My name is Mark, my handle on the forums is Andro, and today I'm going to be showing you how to recreate the 20 go to 10 maze generator from the Commodore 64 that you can see right here in this picture. So today we're going to be doing this with the mesh instance op and the array ops inside of cables. So without further ado, let's get started. So first of all, I'm just going to zoom in a touch and then I'm going to create a mat cap material new. I'm then going to plug this into a mesh instance op. Into the geometry input, I'm going to plug in a cube. I'm going to connect a trigger. And in between, I'm going to add the trigger once op, because we only need to send the cube once into the mesh instance. So I'm just going to define the sizes here. So if we look at the original picture, it's not a cube. It's like a long rectangle. So I'm going to give this the sizes 0 0.2, 0 0.2, and 1.5. Okay, so far so good. So we just did a bite-sized video about the points field 3D op. It's a really great op to be able to just generate a 3D array of points. So a point is X, Y, Z data, the X, Y, Z coordinate of a point. So I'm going to get this, I'm going to get the array out, and I'm going to plug it into positions. Great. We don't see anything because we just need to add something over here. So I'm going to do 20 by 20 by 1. And we don't see a lot. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to create a scale up. I'm going to turn this down to, say, 0 0.1. Great. So this is a grid, like uh, a 3D array of points. And on each of those points, we're rendering a cube. So if we look at the original Commodore 64 piece, all of the uh, rectangles are diagonal, they're not straight. So we'll get there in a moment. So what we need to do now is we need to create rotational data. So the handy thing here is we get the total points out here from the points field 3D op. So I'm going to grab this. I'm going to plug it into an array op. Create an array and fill it with one value. I don't need to rotate on the X or Y coordinate, uh, only the Z um, uh, aspect. So I'm going to go down here. I'm going to grab an array pack, free. So this is X, Y, Z. So these can just be zero, as you can see. Default value zero. We're going to give it a trigger. And I'm going to plug this in here. So rotations. So now I'm going to pull this out. And I'm going to grab the random array op. Generate an array of random values. And we're going to plug this into the Z component right here. Now, we don't see a lot because we're only rotating by one degree. So I'm just going to crank this up. And as you can see, everything here starts to move and to get a random offset. So we need to make this more fixed, more constrained to get the look that we want. So this is actually a lot easier than it seems. So I'm actually just going to generate a value from 0 to 2. Okay. And now I'm going to go here. And I'm going to say array seal and this is going to make all of these floating point numbers if i click here you can see we've got floating point numbers it's going to make them into whole numbers it's going to round it up so i'm going to click here and we only get a one or a two coming out of it so now i'm going to add an array multiply up and i'm now going to put this on 90 and voila we're already pretty close to the Commodore 64 look. Let's move this up so we have a bit of space. So this is the X component, Y component, Z component. So now we just need to rotate it 45 degrees to get that look we want. So we just make an array sum up. Let me go here. And if I now put this on 45, as you can see, we have the Commodore 64 go to 10 look. We can go here to the random array and we can change the seeds and we can get different outcomes and different results from the maze. Pretty simple, pretty quick. So we can just make this a little bit uh, flashier. So let's move this up here, move this up here. And I'm just gonna add a clear color, pick the color picker, put it on some kind of light blue, put this here just to step out of the white and black region of the colors. Go over here 
and I'm going to make that a little bit darker. So it's just a little bit more Commodore 64 like. So this is a really good basis to start generating lots of generative patterns out of this. So the points field 3D, we could go here and put this on two, on three, and on four. And as you can see, we can start to create really interesting, complex forms with this. So let's put it back to one. We could change the multiplier, which is the spacing between each of the grid parts in the point field. And if we pull it down, we start getting this interesting thing where they go through each other. I can now use the scale and bring it back up again. As you can see, we've now got a different look again. So let's put this back in 0 0.1. Just trying to show you there's a couple of really cool things that you can do here. Put the multiplier back on one. So we could go here and instead of only generating two um, random possible outputs, we could go, let's put this on eight. And now let's put the array multiply on say 45. And as you can see, we've now got a very different look again. If I'd go here and I put this on zero, we get this, 45, we get this. I could now go over here, I could put this on say six, and I could put the array multiplier on 22.5. As you can see, I don't think this is very pretty, but I'm just trying to show you that with a couple of changes to a few parameters that you can start to create very interesting looks of this. So let's just put this back the way it was to Array multiply 90, array sum back on 45. So this was the copycat with cables on how to do the 20 go to 10 Commodore 64 maze generator. I hope this video has been educational and informative. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them under the video below or to post them on the forums. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. Bye.